We're all about the archers. I'm Philippa and I'm joined by Lauren and Quentin today to talk to the wonderful Emerald O'Hanrahan, who plays Emma Grundy. Emma, welcome. Thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's lovely to have you here. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. Emerald, what a joy it is to speak to you. Welcome, welcome. Um, oh, is thank it you. fun as playing the part of Emma, being across quite a lot of the archers gossipy areas? I know Emma works in the she works in the ball, she works in the tea room, she's part of the Grundy family. Is it lovely yeah. to be able to record so many scenes with so many different people? And I is there love anyone that. Oh do you? Oh great. And yeah, is there anyone that it. you haven't recorded with that you'd love to record with? Oh, that's a great question. I really love, yeah, I love how how many areas she can be in. Um, and I love that she loves gossiping so much. She really yeah. is her mum's daughter. And yeah. I've always been a massive Susan fan before I was in the show. And uh, so, yeah, just being her daughter and being part of that gossipy world is just so much fun. And I, I love... I mean, I love knowing people's business. That's why I love the archers. So yeah. um, it's great being in that sort of world of it. I think I'd love to do more scenes with Kate. I really love Kate. Right. Um, and I love Justin. I'd love to do more scenes with Justin. I feel like there would be a really fun, like he's so, um, Simon Williams, who plays him, is just so fun and hilarious and plays him so beautifully. Um, and I was listening to him on the omnibus this morning and I just, I would love to, yeah, do more I with Justin. I guess their paths fun. don't cross too often, do they? Emerson not enough. No. no, not enough, not enough. And maybe the same for Kate as well. I guess Kate and I know. Emma's paths don't cross all that much, despite They're being very... of a similar age and mm. been around for Very a while. different yeah. worlds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. But you love yeah. being in the gossipy part of it all. Mm. Love it. Yeah, I really <laughs> love it. <laughs> You, you you need a comeuppance scene, don't you, with with Justin, a bit like Natasha had the other night, call it, yeah. calling yeah. his bluff. Yes. Um, oh, I loved that. Wasn't that wonderful? It was great. Mm. It was great. Um, but I love the way you're keeping literally a tab on Natasha and Tom. That's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Emerald O'Hanra. It's a lovely name, Emerald. It's Thank a lovely you. name. It um, is a lovely name. <laughs> I mean, you've got to have some Irish roots, and yet I see you were born and raised in Cambridgeshire. Yes, yeah, in Cambridge, yeah. Um, yes, so the roots are a little bit further back. But um, but I've married um, into a Delaney family, so I've married... My family is even more Irish roots now, which is just <laughs> lovely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do, do you have... Were your parents Irish then? Is that, is that my the O'Hanrahan? Yeah, so my... Um, so the O'Hanrahan's a funny one because it's... Um, it was actually my dad's my dad's mum's maiden name so my paternal grandmother's maiden name um and um I had a slightly chaotic family um <laughs> it's probably one of the reasons I'm an actor and uh my parents um married each other twice and the second time they <laughs> married each other they wouldn't take each other's name uh because it was like we've I've, I've done it once and that didn't work and I'm not taking your name so they went back to um, my granny's maiden name, which is O'Hanrahan. So we resurrected right. the name. Yeah, Amazing. Because they, had, they had two daughters, so not, the name hadn't carried on anywhere in, in our branch. There's plenty of O'Hanrahans, but just not in our branch. But now we've got it again, so it's That's really fantastic. Nice. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. It's a soap opera in itself. But presumably, oh, it really is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> presumably Emerald is after the Emerald Isle, is that right? Well, I mean, I d my dad just... Um, my dad always really loved the name and um my mum my mum was told I was going to be a boy by a psychic they didn't know if I was going to be a boy or a girl she went to see a psychic obviously and um they said he's going to be a boy and he's going to be on the stage so they kind of got it right but she said uh, to my dad if it's a girl you can name him because <laughs> she was so convinced that psychic was right and then when I was born she's like ah and the, apparently the nurse came in and said, does the baby have a name? And my dad said, yes. <laughs> and he'd been keeping it quietly. Like, I'm Lovely. just going to call, call her Emerald. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great brilliant. tale. Great tale. <laughs> <laughs> Emerald, I wanted to talk to you about the laughs that you have recording, because even last week with the <laughs> cauliflower eclairs, I mean... It, yeah. 
<laughs> with the almost unbelievable scenes. <laughs> how yes, how many laughs did you have recording that? Oh, it was so much fun. I really, really love getting the scripts and looking through and just uh, the what I love about Emma is that there's there's some really lovely, um, emotional, truthful, beautiful um, storylines with her. And then there's these wonderful comedy storylines as well. It's just so much fun to do the variety. And um, and I absolutely love doing the comedy. And that was really fun reading about Tom clearly losing his mind completely. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, yeah, it was really lovely to be able to, to be able to do that scene was a treat. Were you, there you a really sounded laughs? like what? you were going to be sick, actually. Sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. What, um, were, are yes, those scenes the ones where, yes, you're just laughing so much? Or is it actually sometimes the more serious scenes when you start laughing as a release from those difficult moments? Yeah, it can be both. Definitely can be both. And it's, um, I, I did a... Um, rehearsal with an actor friend a few years ago and she used to do loads she's an amazing actress called Jane Lapotere and she worked with the RSC loads and uh she said when you're doing a tragedy that's when you have to have all your laughter and it all gets when it when you're doing a comedy it's all quite a heavy atmosphere because it all goes and it's not quite like that because we don't we're not living it for weeks like a play but um but there's definitely an element of that that when there's something heavy you do I've done some really lovely, heavy stuff with um, thinking about when Emma and Ed lost their chance of living at the Beechwood house. Um, mm. And that was horrendous. And then yeah. their breakup and all that horror, horror, horror for them. And, uh, and, and we actually had loads of fun doing it. Loads of fun. And I think you do have to, um, yeah, like you say, laugh to release the tension. And, and what, I just love working with Barry. He's so great. So we always have good fun. Did, did you have a good laugh um, when you had your no nocturnal activities? Shall we put it that way, Emerald? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was quite. I found that quite embarrassing. <laughs> You've resurrected it here. <laughs> can rely on. That was lovely, about. wasn't it? It's just <laughs> getting quite hot thinking about it. <laughs> We'll move swiftly it's beautiful. on. Beautiful, thank you. We'll Emma. move Sorry, swiftly on. Um, I, I'm surprised I didn't lead with this question, but George, we need to George. talk about George. <gasps> do you think he's misunderstood, or do you think he's a genuine woman hater? Are you a George apologist? Well, just, How do you feel about him as Emerald? Well, I, I have to, yeah, as Emerald, I have to talk very differently to as Emma because I've always yeah. been a fan, and I am a big fan, and I. And I, and I do want to have the sort of, you know, as Emerald, yeah. I think he's a complete psychopath and a total misogynist. I do. I do. I could go forward knowing yeah. that you, if you feel like that, Emerald, then I feel justified in my, my feelings about George as well. He's Delighted brilliant. Isn't he it. brilliant? Yeah. He just, we've been waiting to like, because you don't meet the children for so many years. No. And yeah. you sort of go, won't it be wonderful when we can meet? And Barry and I have been saying for years, he is going to be such trouble when we meet him. He's mm -hmm. just so rich. All the stuff that he went through as a little tiny kid, as a bigger kid, and now, and it's all, I just love the the real time reality of, of his, I mean, he's so, I was thinking about this yesterday, he's so horribin and not, because the Grundies are really like, and especially the Grundy men, like historically, um, are allowed to be the sort of rogues, you know, they're kind of, they're really well-meaning and lovely and lovable and it always goes wrong and there's always a kind of slightly um, dodgy deal, um, but they're always from from a really good place and uh, and the Horribins are not like that and I think he's really Horribin. I just yeah. love it and I, and I love how they've got, they've come through a really tough time Emma and George and she's so loyal to him and so it took loyal. her so much to start seeing you know reality with him and I think they're in a beautiful place and I think I do think that there's a I mean it could go anyway couldn't it I think it could go like I think I think as a listener I think Tom and Natasha are kind of psychopaths and I think yeah. they're like absolute you know like 
run businesses and they they <laughs> the psychopaths are the people in charge aren't they in the world yeah and i think george could be like that he could just be a really successful business guy and i do think after everything with um helen um his his getting on at bridge farm is because him and tom and natasha actually have quite a lot in common yeah. And I love all that. It's beautiful. And so it could go this kind of like really successful or it could, you know, who knows? He's so, I do think he's so damaged. He's got to be. Yeah. There's so much there. But I, I just, just, yeah, I love it. I was just mouth listening to the scenes of... I know. Like, I've been listening to The Archers for about eight years now. So it, mm-hmm. it, I felt like it was the first big blowout that happened. My husband and I, we were... Just a complete shock. It was bad, wasn't it? It was amazing. And I feel like George's character is in sort of stark comparison to how much of a sweetheart Brad is as well, because Brad is yeah. similar age, yeah. similar family and things like that. And Brad is yeah. just an absolute sweetheart. And then you've got He's got all the sweet, George. hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And then you've got and George. All the but... dark genes have come to George. I'm absolutely elated but then it's to hear epigenetics. that's how you feel about that emerald. Honestly. <laughs> 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 but it is, it's all like it's it's gotta be like Brad has had, you know, for every everyone always, you know, makes fun of Tracy and her kind of and and you know brad and chelsea being her kids and having quite a kind of but she's really solid in her parenting and she's really um they've always had a really solid um uh what's the word sorry covid brain um like a really um solid and secure background they're secure and george Hmm. has not had that experience so when you put those genes in the environment you know what's gonna it's fascinating i just love how true it is you know the the characters are so they're all so real they're so brilliantly drawn because that scene uh between the the four of you when george laid into you ed and will (gasps) was phenomenal i mean your your shock was palpable it was really well acted i have to say emerald but um oh um, thank you it was a treat of a scene it was really uh, yeah but I was list- listening to it thinking, my God, how could you say that? But then afterwards I thought, to be fair, what he was saying was true. And that's why it was such I a know. great scene, wasn't it? <sighs> I felt awful for you three, but actually I thought, George, and that explains a lot about George. He's that a child. Scene, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. He's a, it, when you think about it, he's a child growing up in that. What has he gone through and what has yeah. he had at school? And all, you know, we don't mm. really, it's mm. a lot. It's a lot to grow up with, mm. you know. What an absolute shock, though, the, the actor who plays George to come in and just Isn't deliver brilliant. that just out of nowhere. Like, we haven't heard Fabulous. from George, and now all of a sudden we're all talking about George all the time. Like, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. But, Angus but, Stobie, he's fabulous. But do you think the, the um, she's called the Archer's Fairy, sprinkling her fairy dust, is sprinkling it all over George. He's going to be, he's all reformed now. He's going to be a nice chap because we're all, we're all getting used to him being a, the next baddie. I know, I know. Well, obviously, we're not told a thing. Um, I, oh. I, I create all these different theories, and uh, <laughs> and oh, but but yeah, but it's nothing so we don't to do know. with me. We don't know, right? <laughs> don't okay. Know. I hope all these different. It could be so many different areas, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Emerald, as well as the big scenes that we've just been talking about, there's also the little moments with Emma that I love, and one of mm. those I love the most is her very aggressive receiving of payment for things when she's cross with someone <laughs> and the, the tapping in that. of the code oh it's just glorious it, yeah is that something you're really aware of it just comes through <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because it's always anything physical is a um is like a dance between the actor and um Vanessa Nuttall who does the uh she's your arms and your physical kind of presence in the scene so if there's anything you need to do she'll be doing it and you'll be you know holding scripts or just sounding like she's because she's a master of um of that of the physical stuff not being too intrusive being the perfect sort of level um sounding as if it's your hand you know she's extraordinary and so um yeah so it's it's her doing the uh the angry tapping and it's and it is a little dance that we have fun with <laughs> oh i hoped it was you doing it emerald i really felt it was i know emma i know 
That's Sad lovely. Face. <laughs> <laughs> That's slamming and passive aggression. Lovely. <laughs> We She's talked... so the queen of passive aggressive, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we talked very briefly at the top, before we'd even started recording, about Christmas trees. I've got my Christmas tree here on display. Very beautiful. What do you think Emma would like for Christmas this year? Ah, oh, isn't that lovely? A house. I think... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously. No, do you know, I think she's quite... Weirdly, I think she's really satisfied with... Because I think she did lose her mind entirely yes. over the house, yeah. obviously. Um, had a little break. Um, and I think having got Ed back and her family back, and especially everything having happened with George this year, I think she's pretty satisfied in her mobile home. Um, as long as you call it a mobile home and not caravan. Um, what would she like for Christmas? It's such a good... I think she'd probably like... Um, like a big, just a huge bag of money so that she could, you know, so that she just wouldn't need to worry for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if, I don't know if there's anything particular she's, I'm sure there's like a particular necklace she's eyeing up. There's always a particular necklace she's eyeing up. But, um, but I think she'd probably like to just be able to relax a bit. She works so hard. Yeah. I was thinking maybe just people just to leave her alone for a bit and just have a lovely bath without oh, a people really nice interrupting bath. her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would probably be it, wouldn't it? Yeah. But yeah, not in a just mobile leave her alone home. for an afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, probably a hotel suite on her own <laughs> overnight. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've just, you just referred to her, her mad scene, you know, when she's running around Ambridge begging for money yeah. from anybody. I have to confess, Emeralds, I, I still feel a bit traumatised thinking about that whole scene mm. or that whole storyline because it was really weird, wasn't it? It was so, yeah, it was so, um, it was traumatising, was really traumatic. Yeah. She, it was all she'd wanted and she kind of went into this spa. She's always done yeah. this where she goes into this um, space where whatever she's after, that's all she can see and nothing mm. else exists. And, um, and she went really into that and, uh, and then it all coming, crushing, crushing her. It was just, yeah, mm. that was full on. That really felt like a, a responsibility, that storyline. It was really, um, I felt privileged to do that. But it wasn't, obviously it wasn't lovely to do. No. It was a beautiful she... storyline, I thought. that It was handled really nicely by the writers and directors, it, obviously. Yes, it was, but I felt I felt worried for Emma at the end of it because she normally holds it together, doesn't she? And she just lost it this time. Yeah, it really did break her. Yeah, it did. I think that was a bit of a um, defining moment for her. Yeah. Mm. Something mm. changed there for her, definitely. Mm. I think from the minute we heard her getting all her mood boards and books together with samples and everything, it was just setting her up to fail. It's just yeah, it was so never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but know, you've been acting the part now. Is it thirteen years, Emerald? Is that how long you've yeah. been yeah, doing it? It is. Yeah. If I was like, could... it's not that long, but then the <laughs> pandemic like took a load more time, didn't it? Yeah. But if you could go back to yourself on the first day you arrived on set to record, is there anything that you would just whisper in your ear? Ah, oh, um, yeah, I'd want to say it's all going to be okay and everyone's really lovely. I was so nervous. I was so, so nervous. And I was really worried that people wouldn't accept a new Emma because I replaced the amazing Felicity Jones and I was really obsessed with um, matching her voice and her energy and being a good fit. And I was really worried that the actors um, wouldn't uh, go for it. And I and I shouldn't have worried about any of that because everyone was so lovely. And I, I know everyone says it, but it really is true. Like, it's a really lovely family. We've heard that so much and it's so nice to yeah. hear. It's so true. It's so true. And and it's weird because it's all Archer's time. So because you record, you know, once a month at most, if you're in the storylines. Um, so like Holly, who plays Alice, I just saw the last time I saw her, she was pregnant. And the last time I'd seen her before that, she was pregnant. You know, like it was just <laughs> so, like with the previous baby. So yeah. the, it all concertinas and the pandemic especially has concertinaed everything. You haven't seen people for years. So it's just, it's an amazing, it's like a little party every time you, it's a reunion, it's just beautiful. 
Um, in terms of uh, Emma being at the tea room, what are your baking and cake making skills like, Emerald? And do you think how do you think you'd fare running a tea room? Oh, I wouldn't fare well I don't think I I really like baking but um I don't do it enough and I'm not great at like following recipes entirely I love finding a recipe and then being like "Mm, I'm going to substitute this my family won't eat my bakes because they're like oh what is in this brownie is it and I'm like it's fine it's delicious and it's really good for you and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to have it's black bean brownies, isn't it? It's bl- black beans. Like, yes, it is black beans and sweet potatoes. And it works really well. <laughs> and I think it does. But um, yeah, I'm too experimental, I think, to run. Oh, maybe I should run a tea room with Tom, but I don't think I should be oh, running well, my well. own. <laughs> you, you just need to add some cauliflower, Emerald. That's all you need to do. Then I'll be fine. Then I'll be yeah. absolutely fine. <laughs> mind you, you mind you, you had a tough gig recently, didn't you? I'm uh, tasting a eating a lot of cake for children in need. Yes, that was very difficult. Um, no, it was the best job ever. I couldn't see <laughs> after I'd had 10, ten bakes. I was so messed up on sugar. That was incredible. That was really lovely. It was an amazing um, <laughs> post-studio treat. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> um, I just go, you, uh, uh, Philippa mentioned how you, you know, you've been there 13 years now. Um, mm. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe yeah. you, you trained at Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, yeah. which is the same as Madeline, who plays Chelsea. Yeah, amazing who, Madeline. Who was taught there by Sonny. So yeah. all, all yeah. Archer's roads lead back to um, the yeah. Bristol Old Vic. <laughs> yeah. And then I believe you joined the BBC's radio drama company. Now, was that your way into the Archers? Yeah, it was actually, yeah. I won... Um, the Carlton Hobbs um, Award that year when I was graduating and the prize was um, some months with the with the radio rep at the BBC, mm. which was the most incredible launch into the world. Really, it was like carrying on training, but being paid for it. It was so good. And, and we would, you'd have totally different, huge stars coming in and, and uh, to do all sorts of different new writing, established writers, beautiful um plays by mike bartlett and then brand new people who'd just graduated a few years before and worked a lot with anna massey was an incredible actor before she died and um just such a treat and then i everyone was going up to the archers and they said oh you'll go up to the archers you love it so much they'll have you up and i was saying a lot i can't wait to go up to the archers i'm so excited to go up to the archers and um <laughs> And I wasn't called and I wasn't called. And I was like, this is getting ridiculous. It's like, the time is nearly up, guys. <laughs> and uh, and I just kept saying, I really want to be in the Archers and I don't want to play a policewoman. I don't want to play a social worker. I want to play a real character. Which I mean, so ridiculous. And then I had a call from one of the executive producers and she said, we're thinking of recasting one of the characters. Um, do you think you could match Emma? And I just said, yep, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and they sent me CDs. They sent me CDs of, I think it was two omnibuses. And I had it in my CD Walkman. And I just listened for, I think I had two weeks to like learn her voice. And um, mm. oh, it was, yeah, that was intimidating and amazing fun to just get to dive into her character even more. And obviously I knew her because I was a listener but I didn't know her to mimic her. Mm. And then I did a, a remote audition because I was um, working at Maida Vale. And then, and then, yeah, and then got it and then couldn't tell anybody for ages. It oh. was amazing. Yeah. Was it, was it a difficult yeah. you had voice? like a phrase was or it... something to get you into it? I did, yeah. And I used to phonetically write out everything <clears throat> that... Um, that uh, Felicity was in the way that she would say it and write and then write it over my scripts. But I, I, the way that she, when she was bumping into anyone, she'd say hi. And so it was, it was that sort of sound saying hi, um, would always get me into it. Yeah. And actually any scene with um, Charlotte who plays Susan, that's, that always keys me back into her. Cause she's, she's just fabulous. And uh, yeah. So I just love having scenes with Susan. Was it a difficult voice to mimic? 
No, actually, um, because it was so particular. Um, I really loved it. And I, I looked her up um, because I'm terrible with um, if someone tells me a name, I can't I'm I'm I don't know. I've got some sort of weird brain thing. I can't um, put faces to names. And uh, so I looked her up and I was like, oh, OK. And uh, and I decided that we looked quite similar. We both got quite big cheeks. And I decided that we had a very similar vocal tract. So it was going to be fine. It's going to be possible. Um, yeah. So that I, re- I just I really enjoyed that. I've always liked doing voices and um, and accents and stuff. So I, I really liked the opportunity to, yeah, dive into that really specific voice. Wonderful. Well, Emerald, we come to the questions now from the Facebook group. If you are... <laughs> Lovely. Ready for these. And I think, Quentin, you've got the first yes. one. First one comes from Rob, not that one. And he said, The previous occupant of Emma's shoes was Felicity Jones, who went on to lead one of the better Star Wars spin offs, Rogue One. <laughs> Do you have any ambitions in that direction? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Yeah, I just, I love um, all of the work. I'd love to do everything. Um, yes, absolutely. I would love to do one of the Star Wars films or series or anything. Wilf Scolding, who uh, plays Chris, is in, um, which one is it? It's that fantastic um, uh, Star Wars spin-off. And, uh, and he, so he's he's done it. So everyone's ticking up their little... <laughs> so yes, I need to do one of those, I think. <laughs> well, since you look the like Felicity Jones, uh, since you can mimic... Uh, Felicity Jones and you look like Felicity <laughs> Jones I think you should stand in for Felicity Jones <laughs> I think she's got her I think she's got it covered to be honest <laughs> but I could do I could do something different <laughs> I've got a question here from Annie and Annie says how high do you think Emma can fly now she's determined to gain some further education and qualifications oh. there's a second part of the question and she wants to she wants to know how concerned um, do you think Emma should be about George's recent behaviour? So I feel like we covered that a little bit earlier. But yeah, we how have high a bit. do you think Emma can fly now? So oh, I I just love that she's. I think she's got real brains, and um, and I think they were really squashed very early by getting um, sidetracked by boys. And uh, I do. I think there's nothing she couldn't do. To be honest, she's so determined, and she has got a really good brain if she can just access. Um, I always thought it'd be more numbers would be her thing because she loves like business and numbers and stuff. And I think it's really cool that she's going for a um, an English literature GCSE because that's not her strength. So she's trying to kind of uh, like fill out her, her strengths, which is cool. I think it shows she's got some ambitions and she, she always did have ambitions, but she's been slightly crushed. And so it's really nice to see them coming up again. I think, she should be really concerned (laughs) about George (laughs) just to say (laughs) well the the next question we have is from Mia not your Mia our Mia and she first of all has a photo to go now I don't know how clearly you can see that photo is it clear or do I need to message it to you oh yeah message it to me (laughs) so Mia yes Mia says this yeah, she says, this is a photo with me. That's Mia there with yourself and your husband Mia. at St. Mary's <laughs> Cathedral in Newcastle in 2019. Yes, yes it um, was. It was pre-pandemic and everything. <laughs> yes. And Mia asks a question. She says, how important was it to get Emma's accent right in light of how previous Emma and Susan sounded? And was it difficult? Yes. I know we've touched on that already, but just if you can add a bit more to that. Oh, well, first of all, thank you for um, asking the question, Mia, and how lovely to get that picture and to hear from you because it was such a treat to meet you um, and to be up in Newcastle. Um, uh, Yeah, it was really important to me and especially because, and I think this is something that Madeline's done incredibly well, um, the matching of the families, the voices, because you only have voices for the archers, you need to place the families really um, clearly. And uh, Charlotte has done such an incredible job with her voice. Um, It's so of the countryside around Birmingham. It's so uh, specific and real. 
And so Felicity had done beautiful work in in matching her. And so it was really important to me to honour that honour that and um and to belong to to Susan's family. She's really um I, I just love that. Um and yeah, and Madeline and uh and Susie are very much of the same world. I love that. It's just beautiful. Love that. Thank you. We've got a question now from Pam, and she says You've played Emma for well over a decade now. It feels like you have always been I Emma. Believe it. But before you, it was the incredible Felicity Jones. And it was with the Ed Emma Will Triangle that I really got engaged as a listener. So Pam says, how did it feel stepping into the mighty Felicity's shoes after such a huge story mm. arc when you first took over? Did you ever meet her? If so, did she pass on any hints and tips? Oh, I've never met her. Um, and I would love to. And my husband met her at a, a premiere of a job that he did. And she was so lovely about me taking over. And um, I believe she's still a listener. And that was um, so lovely to sort of have her blessing to hear that. Um, so that was a real relief once I'd heard that, that, I, that I'd done a, a sort of good enough job for her. Um, massive shoes to fill she's incredible um <laughs> and that storyline really hooked me as well i loved that um there were a couple of storylines when i was um little that i that i were was really um hooked in by and and that was definitely one of them um it made it difficult because i was so judgy of emma as a listener <laughs> Um, so it was quite, um, because you have to love the character you're playing, right? Like you have to yeah. really find a lot you love about them. And I do really love Emma, but it was when I was first, um, preparing to play her, it was, that was a challenge. <laughs> Just accept her. <laughs> you have to love a lot about her, but not her son. <laughs> well, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Um, I really love it. I I just love but then I loved I loved Rob and I and I you know, I mean obviously he went too far, blah blah blah. Yeah. But when he first came in I was like, This is fantastic, yeah. this is going. <laughs> so yeah, I'm always I really love villainous moments for people. <laughs> You've alluded to it a couple of times. You've clearly been a lifelong listener to the Archers, haven't you, Emma? I have, yeah. It's so nice to hear how yeah. much of a fan you are. It's amazing. <laughs> You've got great knowledge. I always listened with my granny. Um, oh. And my granny kind of um, was a, she was like my mum. And uh, so, I, and she'd listened from the very beginning and she was a massive fan. So I sort of inherited all her knowledge mm. and we talked about it all the time. Um and so it was a real, um, it was, a, uh, I felt really, I was so glad that I was, I was cast in it and, and that we could share that. Um, I, I think when I was allowed to tell anyone, I told granny and I didn't tell anyone else for a little while. And we just had it as Ooh. our own little thing. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. That's so nice. Um, I've got a question from Maddie. Mm -hmm. uh, Maddie says, <clears throat> were you a listener back when the Ed versus Will paternity mm. um, feud was raging? And did it have any effect on how you felt about the characters when they became your family? Oh, that's a nice question. Yeah. Fan uh, yeah. I mean, yes. Listened. Had huge opinions. So I'm a bit opinionated. <laughs> um, and I think becoming part of the family stepping into that uh playing her changed all the kind of um how i could think about them and what like i i still i love being a listener i love the show i love soap as a thing i think it's a fantastic medium and i think it's really necessary for society like not to get too but you know what i mean and uh so it feels like a custodian that so it feels different my relationship with each of those um uh characters and people but um yeah there's i guess there's i wonder if i see them a bit more um clearly now because because i'm playing emma i can't like it's almost a luxury to just be like oh they're like that or to write people off in different ways you know as a listener you can be like yeah they're like that they're like that but when you're playing in the family you have to find the best of all of them and you have to accept because you're a family right even if you're playing a family um and i you know, there's a difference. I I know, <laughs> I know I'm Emerald and I'm not Emma, but um, <laughs> they they are you know her family. So you've got to love them, 
and so yeah I just do I just love them well, Emerald, I don't know if you'll love this question, but it's a corker and it's from Rachel. If you, Emerald, lived in Ambridge, which of these mm-hmm. three characters would you snog, marry and avoid? <laughs> <laughs> You've got three, Rachel. so here we go. <laughs> Chris, okay. Jacob, Tom. Chris. Emma's brother. I can't. So I'd have to avoid Chris because even if I'm there as Emerald, that's that's Emma's brother, right? Like that's. <laughs> so sorry. Give me the other ones again. Chris Yakob so, and Tom. Tom. <laughs> Snog marry avoid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <sighs> so have to have to avoid Chris because he's Emma's brother and it's too weird. Yeah. Um, right. That's really difficult. Um, <laughs> I guess it would be like an illicit snog with Tom because he's married to Natasha and you wouldn't want to mess with that too much. Um, and I guess then you have to marry Jacob. That would wow. be incurring so much wrath from Kate. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and it would be yep. so awkward as a marriage, wouldn't it? I mean, he's yeah. hilarious. He's hilarious. He's funny. he's funny. So funny. But you'd be so like, you couldn't leave anything yeah. out anywhere. Everything would be really dull. Constant but cleaning. He, but he would be wearing a gladiator skirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, constantly. With his summer tan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The great question. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> well, we come to the final question today, Emerald, and this is every week when we talk to a cast member, we ask them a question that they would ask the person coming on next week. And so the last person we, sp- we spoke to was the wonderful Jackie Lai, who, of course, plays Joy. Yes. And her question straight away she knew what to ask, and she says, and please <laughs> ask Emma if she's completely got over the fact that she lost her house on the estate and do you harbour oh. jealousy to joy? Oh, lovely, lovely. <laughs> um, I think she's probably got a little bit of jealousy for everyone who lives in Beechwood. Um, but I do think that after getting Ed back she sort of had a rejig of her priorities and she does know she lost her mind about getting that house and I think losing losing everything for quite a while I think she realized it sort of re-anchored her in what really matters so I don't think she wants that anymore um but I think she is a bit jealous of I think it's probably a bit jealous of how easy Joy's life looks like it is rather than probably is Wow, great answer. Well, thank you so much, Emerald. It's just been (laughs) wonderful to talk to you and just hear more about Emma. And you're just you're just wonderful to talk to. So just really appreciate the time. It's been such a pleasure. It's been lovely. Yes, pleasure for us. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. Thank you.